Ludwig Wittgenstein, Tractatus Logico-Philosophicus. Can philosophy provide insight into life's biggest questions? What are the limits of language to express it? Are metaphysics and ethics just nonsensical babble? In his cryptic masterpiece Tractatus Logico-Philosophicus, Ludwig Wittgenstein confronts these problems head-on. He aims to establish the boundaries of meaningful language to separate sense from nonsense in philosophy. Wittgenstein argues that most traditional philosophical questions are actually just misuses of language. They try to say what can't be meaningfully said. His linguistic atomism claims language can only picture concrete facts about the world. Anything beyond that is meaningless. This includes ethics, aesthetics, metaphysics, and religion. For Wittgenstein, these aren't factual topics, so we can't meaningfully discuss them. Tractatus attempts to scrub away the nonsense plaguing philosophy. Its radical claim is that our biggest questions about meaning and value have no answers. We simply can't discuss them. This controversial view shaped 20th century philosophy. Love it or hate it, Tractatus will make you think about how you think. At the Boundary of the World A central theme in Wittgenstein's Tractatus Logico-Philosophicus is that language demarcates the frontiers of meaning. As Wittgenstein famously states, the limits of my language are the limits of my world. In other words, whatever can be expressed in words constructs the boundaries of our knowable reality. He argues that we can't meaningfully discuss anything beyond language's pictorial nature. Language can only portray hard facts and logical interconnections. It can't capture subtle metaphysical truths, ethical imperatives, or subjective aesthetics. Since language is tethered to facts, whatever escapes words also lies outside the limits of our experiential world. The indescribable essence of life, how one should live, why we exist, the nature of consciousness can't be conveyed through literal language. Wittgenstein observes that there are indeed things beyond words which make themselves known. These are mystical. Profound mystical experiences may feel rich with significance, yet the moment we try to put them into words, we leave behind the realm of sense for nonsense. In Wittgenstein's iconic phrase, what can be shown cannot be said, the unsayable truths underlying existence reveal the frontier between language and lived reality. So anything exceeding language's descriptive powers falls outside knowable reality. Language, Wittgenstein posits, comprises all we possess to construct meaning from reality. He says, the thinking self is not in the world, but is a boundary of the world. We can't talk meaningfully from outside our language-constructed world. Wittgenstein's original insight on language's limits revolutionized philosophy. He exposed how traditional philosophy vainly tried to verbalize the ineffable. Fields like ethics, metaphysics and theology transgressed the frontiers of sense. This compelled philosophy to demarcate what we can discuss versus what we must be silent about. Our world stretches only as far as we can meaningfully describe in words. The remainder persists as an unfathomable mystery, glimpsed but never grasped. What can I say? A key goal of Tractatus is to use logic and philosophy to determine what can be meaningfully said. Wittgenstein states that philosophy's purpose is the logical clarification of thoughts. It seeks to delineate sense from nonsense through rigorous logical analysis. He argues that traditional philosophy fails this task by trying to express the inexpressible, lapsing into nonsensical language. In his view, most philosophical questions and propositions aren't even false, but simply nonsensical. Fields like metaphysics, ethics and theology claim to provide factual knowledge when what they really generate is nonsense. He points out that the sheer fact of existence itself can't be communicated meaningfully in language. Thus Wittgenstein compares philosophy to therapy. It's an activity, not a doctrine. Philosophical work should consist of elucidations that make propositions clear, not the generation of new philosophical propositions. It remedies nonsense by logically scrutinizing language use. This clarification reveals logical propositions as empty tautologies. They showcase the inherent logic of language and the world, but assert nothing factual. Likewise, he says, mathematical equations don't portray anything real about the world. They calculate possibilities but don't represent reality. In essence, Wittgenstein's linguistic atomism argues language can only picture concrete states of affairs, not subtle metaphysical truths. He concludes that we must pass over in silence what we can't meaningfully speak of. 
Through this radical logical paring down, Wittgenstein stripped away what he considered nonsense masquerading as philosophy. In exposing language's limits, he established a new standard. Philosophy should only state what can actually be stated. By respecting language's boundaries, philosophy can clarify what can be meaningfully discussed, while the rest is left unspoken. Math isn't real. One of Wittgenstein's most thought-provoking arguments is that mathematical equations don't describe real things. In other words, mathematical propositions don't express factual thoughts about the world. Like ordinary language, he contends that mathematical propositions contain tautologies or vacuous statements showcasing the internal relations between concepts rather than concrete realities. He explains that the logic displayed in logical tautologies is analogously shown in mathematical equations. Mathematics can only express itself logically, which is why it appears perfectly orderly, yet detached from substance. He argues that mathematical symbols resemble a game with fixed rules rather than statements about tangible objects and their properties. Mathematics is a method of logic with rules that determine abstract possibilities independent of particular states of affairs. For example, an equation like 2 plus 2 equals 4 demonstrates numeric relations, but it doesn't picture real objects being combined and quantified in the world. What the 2 refers to makes no difference in math, unlike the physical world. As Wittgenstein notes, mathematical and logical propositions convey no factual information about reality. He argues numbers themselves have no inherent meaning outside mathematical language. He provocatively states there are no privileged or essential numbers in logic. Numbers only acquire meaning through equations that display internal mathematical logic. Thus, Wittgenstein concludes the concrete substance of the world can't be mathematical. While mathematics can calculate possibilities, it doesn't represent or describe the actual stuff of physical reality, which follows its own independent rules. This diverges from scientists like Galileo, who believed mathematics describes real properties of the world. Wittgenstein contends mathematics is a closed conceptual system without direct factual meaning. Equations demonstrate logic, not physical phenomena. In essence, Wittgenstein saw mathematics and factual language playing by different rules. Ordinary language pictures reality, while math explores abstract relations unmoored from substance. Mathematics appears universally applicable because it's detached from material constraints, not because it reveals deeper truths than language. The mystical self Perhaps the most enigmatic argument in Tractatus is that solipsism, the view that only the self exists while the external world is an illusion, grasps at something true but can't be meaningfully articulated. Wittgenstein contends that solipsism wrongly attempts to logically portray the relationship between self and world. He states that the spirit of what the solipsist means is correct, but it can't be directly said. Rather, it shows itself. We can't definitively prove through logic the independent existence of the world and other minds. Yet language itself implies their reality. In his view, a shared language points to a shared world but the precise nature of self and world eludes factual language. There's a mystical sense of unity between one's inner experience and outer reality. But this oneness can't be conclusively pictured or described. It exceeds what can be communicated through propositions. Through profound experience, an unsayable truth of being at one with the universe can arise. But the essence of this realization lies beyond language. It manifests as a wordless sense of harmony. Wittgenstein evokes this ineffable mystical oneness when he writes of contemplating the world subspecie eterni. From a universal perspective, the world is seen as a limited but complete whole, with all necessarily connected, yet we can't capture this metaphysical unity of self and existence. As he famously argues, what can be shown cannot be said. The sublime feeling remains ineffable. Wittgenstein argues that traditional philosophy goes astray when trying to express such unsayable truths about reality. Solipsism represents the inexpressible nature of self and world. Philosophy's task isn't to speak the unspeakable, but to acknowledge language's limits through logical analysis, avoiding profundity, and sticking to what can be stated. Ultimately, he contends that solipsism gestures at mystical truths about existence that can't be articulated logically or factually. Philosophy should recognize language's boundaries rather than overreaching into obscurity.
The Myth of Meaning Do virtuous actions really lead to positive outcomes? Is there some universal justice ensuring wrongs are eventually made right? Wittgenstein's philosophy implies concepts like karmic retribution are merely wishful thinking. His critique of causality suggests notions of cosmic payback and what goes around comes around are comforting fictions, not actual metaphysical truths. In fact, he argues that ideas like cause and effect don't really link events in reality. We observe regular successions and patterns of facts, but can't definitively know the underlying causes behind them. Causality is a projection of the mind onto the world, not something inherent in the fabric of reality itself. It's a useful tool for describing empirical patterns, not an actual force governing affairs. So, concepts like karma and cosmic justice have no intrinsic foundation in reality. The common idea that our actions somehow generate inevitable reactions is an imaginative myth. It falsely assumes that causal links exist between ethical deeds and subsequent outcomes. But Wittgenstein saw causality as just a handy linguistic construct for describing regularities, not an absolute law somehow ensuring moral equilibrium in the universe. Likewise, the popular notion that what goes around comes around implies worldly affairs have an underlying metaphysical order or purpose causing proportional effects. But Wittgenstein argues that no logical or natural laws legitimize this hypothesized cause and effect relationship between inputs and outputs. There's no inherent guarantee of neat and tidy quid pro quo fairness in how events unfold. Wittgenstein's view suggests the universe has no objective or intrinsic meaning in itself. As humans, we impose meaning and value onto the world solely through the window of a language. But language itself can't definitively prove that causal connections, karmic processes, or cosmic justice fundamentally underpin the nature of reality rather than being useful fictions. Yet he still hinted that a form of ineffable subjective meaning may exist beyond the limits of language's powers of description. But authentic meaning-making requires living with and accepting the unbridgeable gulf between our descriptions and the indescribable essence of things as they truly are. So ideas like karmic causality and universal justice offer only reassuring myths that impose moral order on an underlying reality that's likely indifferent. They describe statistically useful patterns and project hopeful narratives instead of the purposeless machinery of existence. We imaginatively mythologize order from chaos because the alternative is profoundly unsatisfying. But reality simply is. To show and not tell. One of the more thought-provoking ideas in Tractatus is that language as a symbol system can't logically define or fully capture particular colors or subjective color experiences. Wittgenstein argued that colors aren't concrete objects that propositions can accurately describe or encapsulate solely through words. We can't pin down the essence of color sensations strictly through linguistic means. While it may initially seem like an obscure point, Wittgenstein used the color exclusion problem to underscore a major gap between reality as subjectively lived through consciousness and language's limited capacity to communicate that experience. Consider the statement, this rose is red. The word red doesn't designate any specific color property. It only contrasts and excludes other hues without revealing the precise qualitative shade intended. We can't definitively encapsulate colors themselves in language but only relate them approximately. Color words function more like self-referential math statements than descriptions of subjective reality. From this, Wittgenstein concluded that standard logical propositions can't fully capture the qualitative essence of color experiences. We perceive colors as sensations, but language can't completely isolate or define their phenomenological nature. This color exclusion issue reveals language's limits in mapping reality as consciously lived. Grammar and logic can't properly communicate the full depth of our encounter with color. What finds its reflection in language, language can't completely portray. Additionally, Wittgenstein argued that logical form shows itself in meaningful propositions rather than through direct statements. This doctrine of showing distinguishes saying from showing. Well-formed sentences exhibit their inherent logic by displaying it in use, not stating it outright. As Wittgenstein wrote, what can be shown can't be said. Propositions demonstrate logical form by putting it on display, not articulating it directly. For instance, 
grammar intuitively shows itself in intelligible speech without declaring its rules word for word. Wittgenstein saw logic as the broader, hidden scaffolding underlying language itself. In other words, our everyday propositions subtly bear witness to logic's bounds by meaningfully expressing them in practice. Ultimately, Wittgenstein's doctrine of showing reveals logic's role in shaping what we can communicate. Our words subtly attest to language's limits by using its logical structure in meaningful ways. In this blink to Tractatus Logico-Philosophicus by Ludwig Wittgenstein, you've encountered the provocative idea that language builds the scaffolding of meaning. But facts can't encapsulate the full depth of conscious life. Philosophy often goes astray by forcing language past its logical limits. Yet within its boundaries, language can illuminate experience through reason's implicit structures. But true meaning reverberates in the unspoken chasm between what we can show and what we can tell about it. Okay, that's it for this blink. But before we let you go, we wanted to let you know that this blink was narrated by an AI-generated voice model. That's me, and we're curious to hear what you thought about it. So if you could take the time to leave us a rating and maybe a quick comment that would really help in improving our future content. Thanks as always for listening, and see you in the next blink.